Hey there. In this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how you can go from having just raw data in whatever database or data warehouse you might have to talking to that data in your um, AI agentic um, client or interface of choice. Um, so in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to be using uh, Postgres via Superbase. Uh, Superbase is just Postgres under the hood, and I'm sure if you are building a product or a SaaS application, you're probably using some form of Postgres uh, to power your application. Um, and then I'm using Claude uh, just because, well, one, um, very, very popular, but also uh, they make it really easy to connect uh, third-party MCP servers. So what I'm showing you here is uh, kind of using these specific tools, but uh, it's really fully extensible to whatever data source and databases you have, and again, whatever clients you want. Now, before we dive in, uh, just a quick note about what Fabi is and where we fit into this picture. Uh, Superbase actually does have an MCP server, so in theory, you could also just connect Superbase straight to Claude. Um, but there's a few reasons that you uh, don't want to do that or that breaks down uh, very quickly depending on what you're trying to do. Um, and so Fabi is an AI data analysis platform and BI solution. You know, what we do is we can connect to a bunch of different data sources and data warehouses, and we will crawl the schema. We will look at sample values. Uh, we can, you can provide context uh, and additional semantics for the AI, which I'll show you how to do, uh, to make sure you have like really, really fast and accurate uh, results uh, to your, for your questions and, and very accurate queries. Um, so that's the reason for, for using Fabi, uh, and it's really, what I'm going to show you here is like straight up the fastest way uh, for you to start talking to your data, uh, regardless of where, where it lives today. So uh, let's get started. We're first going to look at the connection between Fabi and Superbase, and then we're going to do the Fabi to Cloud connection. So uh, first things first, um, if you already have a Fabi account, uh, which I know a lot of you do already, just go ahead and log in. Um, and if you already have your data connected, you can actually even skip ahead. If you don't yet have a Fabi account, just head over to app.fabi.ai and uh, create an account. It takes a whole 30 seconds and you can get started for free. Um, and then you'll be prompted to connect uh, your database for data warehouse um, kind of along the way. Uh, but if you're looking at a smart book, you can do that by heading over to the left-hand side, click on data source, and then under data source, there's a button that says add data source. And again, there's a bunch of different ways to get here. So even if you click here, for example, there's connect a new data source, so a bunch of different ways. I'm just going to go this way. Um, you could theoretically just use Postgres because that's what Superbase is. Uh, I'm going to pick Superbase, but you can see here, again, I have a bunch of different connectors. So I have MySQL and MariaDB and Snowflake and ClickHouse and MotherDoc and so on and so forth. And you can connect multiple as well, which is really, really cool. So back to this example, I'm going to go ahead and select Superbase. And I need to now input this information. So uh, if you're following along and you're not using Superbase, just... Um, uh, feel, free, well, feel free to reach out if you need any help connecting. Otherwise, maybe hit pause, connect your data warehouse or database to Fabi, uh, and then uh, join us once you're connected. So for Superbase specifically, uh, once you're logged in, go to your project, look for the right branch, and then there should be a button that says connect. Click connect. And they just changed the interface recently, actually, and it took me a minute to go and find this. Um, so under method, uh, select this and go for session pooler. And it will change this parameter. I like to just, uh, sorry, just string here, I should say. And uh, go ahead and expand the parameters. And we're just going to start copying this. So the host here is host. The, I think the port's just the same, 5432. 5432, okay. Postgres is the database name user is that and then my password is secret to me and i'm going to go ahead over to my password manager copy my password okay and if i got that right no okay so again this is where some of the magic is happening behind the scenes already here we're looking at the your the schema uh, the tables, the field names, all that kind of stuff, uh, in addition to sample values. And it should just take a minute to really do all of that. Now, if you have a much larger schema, it could take uh, 10, 20, 30 minutes, sometimes up to an hour if you have a lot of tables. 
Um, but it should be very quick um, and you will get an email once it's done, uh, once it's done syncing. So uh, here we go. I can see this is synced up. Um, and you can see here, I have a bunch of, there's a bunch of data that's coming from, from Superbase. Really the only things that matter for this demo is I have like fake product data um, where we have users, orgs, and widgets. We also sell data, but I'll ignore that. Um, you can see here, again, I have a bunch of other data in these other data sources. Um, now, actually, this is where I'll, maybe I'll point out that if you want to give the AI specific context about this data source, you can actually go here and hit Edit Semantic, and you can just, in plain English or in Markdown, explain what data lives in this database, how to join certain tables if you want. Um, you can use really whatever format you want. So really, really cool um, if you feel like the AI uh, isn't quite working exactly the way you want out of the box. I would generally recommend play around with the AI as is out of the box. Um, it usually works very, very well and requires very little tuning, but if you do need some tuning, you can just come, come here. Okay, so now that we're connected, uh, before we go to Claude and start chatting with our data there, let's just pause here for a second and make sure that the AI is working the way we want it to. So I'm gonna say, uh, show me total number of widgets by org. So um, this is our AI analyst agent. It's going to, again, look at that uh, data that we've crawled. It's going to call a number of tools. Um, and a really cool thing here, too, is it's going to like automatically dry run um, whatever SQL or Python it generates to respond. Uh, the other cool thing, too, is I just kind of mentioned that in passing, is it can also use Python to answer the question. So it's not just SQL, which makes this a whole lot more powerful. Um, and here we go. We have the results. Okay, fantastic. I can see the query. Uh, it evidently picked the right source. This looks right to me. You can even say plot the data. Um, this is where, again, in Fabi, in the interface, at least you can do all sorts of like really cool advanced uh, analysis. But again, I'm just going to kind of show you what the analyst agent looks like and how it behaves in our interface. Cool. So I have a chart here. I'm not going to go ahead and like pin this to SmartBook and build dashboards and workflows and all that cool stuff. But what we're trying to do here is we're trying to take this AI analyst and bring this to our client or chat of choice. And again, in this case, I'm going to use Claude. So let's hop on over to Claude. Um, cool. So I want Claude Desktop. Uh, you could be following along with Cursor or uh, OpenAI. Uh, as of the time of this recording, does require developer mode for this. Um, but again, whatever sort of client you're using that um, can do MCP tool calling is perfectly fine. In uh, Claude, uh, you do have to be, I think, a paying, uh, a paying user. So there's also that caveat. Um, once, okay, so assuming you have that, go to uh, settings under your name, uh, look for connectors, and this is where you can connect your um, different MCP uh, tools. Uh, I will caveat this, and you might see it when I actually ask a question. The more tools you have, um, in general, I find that the more the AI gets confused. So I think this is a problem that uh, agentic or AI clients, whatever we want to call it, uh, are going to have to solve over time, where they have to like better understand like which context to go to for which questions. Um, I actually uh, had the best implementations I've seen have actually been engineering or product or data teams that have built their own agent that you can chat with, um, where they've handled the context behind the scenes rather than actually connecting directly to Claude. But that's a topic for another day. For now, I'm going to show you how you can do this very quickly. So let's go ahead and hit Add Custom Connector. Okay, now I need to enter the URL of our MCP server. So let's head on, head on back to Fabi. Under settings here, look for MCP and just grab this URL. Nope, no, that's the name. There we go, hit add. And I think this is a cloud bug. I don't know why it does this. Um, it's prompting me for another tool, which I don't need to do. So I just close that. I hit now connect and this will prompt you to authenticate. Okay, there we go, accept. Open Claude, and now I'm connected. Now there's another little Claude bug here, which is annoying. Um, I actually believe I am connected, but I have to, I think, restart Claude for it to show up. Let's do that. 
Let me search for it here. Back. Let's check. Cool, we're connected. Why it works that way, why it doesn't automatically restart, I don't know. Again, I think there's a lot of work for us to do uh, as a community on uh, around MCP servers, but we got there. Okay, so we're connected. Uh, so let's go ahead and start a new chat and let's uh, ask the AI uh, maybe a similar question. Let's say, you know, which, which users have the most widgets? Going back to what I was saying, there's a chance here that Claude's going to try to go out. Okay, it didn't. Uh, it may have gone and tried to go to Linear or Google Sheets. And like, sometimes it'll ask me like, oh, I can't find a data. Like, where do you want me to go? And I just like, okay, go to, go to Fabby. Um, here it actually figured it out perfectly fine. So uh, that's great. I do think that maybe there is something where like Claude retains like memory from past conversations and it knows to go to like Fabby for widgets. So there may be some of that going on. Um, I'm not 100% not sure though. Uh, but there we go. So we have our uh, we have our, our dummy data coming back here about user widgets, um, and um, yeah. And so if you want to inspect this, you can ask follow up questions as well. And if you want to inspect this, you can actually click on the link, uh, and it will open up a smart book for you. Uh, and you'll have your analysis right here. You'll have your query. Um, you can start you know building charts. Please, uh, please plot this and color each user by role. I think I have user roles, so we'll see if we can do that. Um, and you can sort of pick up your analysis from here as well, so you don't have to stay in your, um, in your uh, AI interface. And again, the cool thing here is that like we just did this whole sort of integration. I think this took me, I guess it took it about 10 minutes. Uh, we did all this with one source, but you can connect a bunch of different sources. So typically, uh, what we see is we have a lot of organizations that have a Postgres instance and maybe even multiple Postgres instances, um, perhaps a Snowflake or Databricks instance and a bunch of things like that. And you can connect all of that to Fabi and provide the context for each source. And that then becomes available immediately in uh, in the chat. Okay, great. This chart doesn't look great. Maybe I'll say, you know, only show me top 20 users. It's a little compressed. Um, but there you go. So anyways, I'll, I'll sort of stop here as uh, and let the agent sort of do its, sort of, yeah, do its thing. You can see here, uh, able to start chatting with your data instantly. Really, really simple. Um, and yeah, this, this to me feels like the future. We're seeing a ton of organizations starting to adapt this. And again, a lot of engineering and product data teams starting to use the MCP server using our token-based authentication, which I didn't really talk about much here, but you can actually generate a token um, and that becomes really powerful once you start embedding Fabi in these like agents that you are building where you can exert just a lot more control and you can surface it in, for example, Slack. Uh, you can create an agent that can talk to a bunch of different tools in Slack, Fabi being one of those tools. Um, as always, if this is a helpful or fun or interesting video for you, definitely follow and like, please. Uh, always uh, very helpful uh, for us and uh, if you have any questions or comments, just drop them down below or reach out to us at any point at support um, at fabby.ai. Thanks for listening.